mambuhay or in kapampangan, luwid kayo. Today's question comes from Northern California. Ms. Dick Adams of Woodland asks, Why did the United States buy the Philippines from Spain when they could beat them? It seems like a simple question. I mean, why would someone pay for something when they could easily take it by simply beating the previous owner, right? It's a valid question, but I'm afraid that the answer is far more complicated. You see, we were taught in schools that the United States defeated Spain in the Spanish-American War of 1898. And as a result, the United States paid Spain $20 million to own the Philippines. And this was all formalized in the Treaty of Paris on December 10, 1898. It was a peace agreement between Spain and the United States that ended the war. It seems pretty simple. Spain was defeated by the US, so therefore the United States is entitled to take over Spain's former colonies, right? Well, not exactly. Exactly. Because you see, what the official history do not tell us is that while it was true that the United States could beat Spain, and yes, they defeated Spain in Cuba, it was an entirely different story in the Philippines. It wasn't really the Americans who defeated the Spaniards in the Philippines. As I've mentioned in my previous videos, it was actually the Filipino revolutionary forces that did most of the fighting against the Spaniards. The Filipinos fought vigorously for their freedom, while the American allies were just watching and waiting to see what will happen next. Next. By June of 1898, the Filipinos had already declared their independence, and by August, they already had effective control of pretty much most of the country, except for the capital city of Manila, and minor places such as a tiny fortified church in the small town of Baler, almost 200 miles up north. It is also important to note that during this time, Mindanao wasn't yet fully colonized, and it hasn't been fully integrated yet to what we now call the Philippines. But despite all of this, the Spaniards refused to accept defeat at the hands of the Filipino people. Instead, they chose to surrender to the Americans. It was more embarrassing for the once mighty Spanish Empire to recognize being defeated by brown people. For them, it was more honorable to surrender to their fellow white men instead of acknowledging brown victory. And since the United States is first and foremost a capitalist nation, it was easier for them to pay the Spaniards for the ownership of the Philippines. So basically, it was easier for them to buy the Philippines as if it was a piece of property than face the fact that that they were invading a sovereign people and trampling on their rights and their freedoms. The United States had always been interested in acquiring colonies across Asia and the Pacific, but it was difficult for them to justify all of these since the United States was founded on the principles of freedom, justice, and democracy. Imperialism is simply the opposite of what the United States was supposed to be. Imperialism is simply incompatible and contradictory to the true essence of liberty and democracy. Spain, on the other hand, was a dying empire, and it was desperate to hold on to whatever is left of what was once the largest and most powerful empire in European history. They knew that they were losing grip and they wanted to make the most out of it. They tried to the bitter end to hold on to their last remaining colonies, namely Cuba, Puerto Rico, the Philippines, and other minor islands. But when they realized that it was too late, they decided that it was more honorable to negotiate with the Americans than to face defeat. The negotiations in Paris started in October of 1898 and by November, Spain had agreed and accepted the demands of the United States to buy the Philippines for $20 million. And the peace treaty was formally signed on December 10, 1898. But throughout this process, the most important voice was ignored. The voices of the Filipino people were simply dismissed as if they did not matter at all. The representatives from the First Philippine Republic who were present in Paris were intentionally kept out of the talks. They pleaded with their American allies, but the Filipinos were denied participation in discussing the future of their country, the future of their people. Despite the fact that they had already won their independence from Spain and that the Americans were supposed to be their allies, the United States decided to buy the Philippines perhaps because it was easier for them to justify a purchase than to recognize the sovereignty of the Filipino people. They saw an opportunity to legitimize their occupation of the islands and by doing so, they stepped on the rights of the Filipino people and spat on the true principles of freedom, democracy, and justice. By buying the Philippines, they thought that they could easily afford a new global empire, but instead their betrayal entangled the United States in a bloodier war and plunged the Philippines and its people into a violent occupation and merciless genocide. It's an almost forgotten chapter of history known as the Philippine-American War. And that is it for me today. And always remember, no history, no self. No history, no self. See you next time. Or in Tagalog, kita kids. And in Kamabangan, Bye!